Take. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. Hope you're having a great week. I got a request for a tech tip about PowerPoint. This individual was having a hard time creating nice, clean looking flowcharts and working with some of the shapes, lines, and other design elements in PowerPoint. So that's what we're gonna get into today and let's get started. So before we get started, I wanna quickly point out that many of the tools that we use today in PowerPoint are also usable in Word. So if you're laying out any graphics or flow charts in Word, you can use the same tools that we covered today. So I'm gonna go ahead and open a blank presentation. And um, what I'm going to do before we get started is, I'm just gonna get rid of this design ideas tab. And uh, I'm going to change our slide layout to a blank slide, just cause I don't want these text boxes to be in the way it's gonna sort of muck up our view here. So I'm just gonna go to the layout button and change this to a blank slide. Now, if we wanna make a flow chart in PowerPoint, um, we've got some simple drawing tools that are on the home tab of our ribbon. We have a bunch of shapes and lines that we can use. So we're gonna use this to create a simple flowchart. So I'm gonna start with a rectangle and I'm gonna go ahead and click on the rectangle and all I need to do is click and drag and that creates a rectangle. Now, if I wanted to make a square, all I would need to do is hold down shift while I was clicking and dragging. And you can see it's constraining the proportions and keeping this a square. If I wanna just keep this as a rectangle, I can let go of shift and there we go. I've got myself a rectangle. Now. In PowerPoint, there are some guides that will allow you to position this in different areas on your slide. We have a guide for the center point of the um, slide uh, horizontally as well as vertically. So you'll notice if I bring this box down, the bottom edge aligns to that guide. If I keep bringing it down, the center aligns to that guide. And if I keep bringing it down, the top edge aligns to that guide. The same thing works with the vertical guide, the right edge, the center and the left edge. So this can help you arrange things on your slide. So for example, I'm gonna go ahead and just put this box um, on the left side here, this rectangle, align it to the center, and I'm gonna put some text in it. And I can do that simply by double clicking and I'm just gonna call this parent node because we're making a flow chart and the first node in a flow chart is always the parent node. So let's say I wanna put three boxes coming off of this parent node. Well, I could redraw them, but I want them to be the same size. So I'm going to select this one and then use copy and paste to make copies of this. So I'm just gonna hit Control C and Control V to make a copy. And if you're on a Mac, that would be Command. If you're on a PC, that would be Control. So Control C, Control V, and I'll Control V again, and Control V again. And now I've got these three um, child nodes. These would be child nodes. So. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of place these wherever. And we do get some guides to align these boxes together, which is really nice. And I can align them to the top, center, or bottom edge of these as well, similar to how the um, uh, the guides for the center of the slide work. So I'm gonna go ahead and align these. And one thing you'll notice is as I drag this bottom one around, it actually shows me that the distance between all of these rectangles is even, so I know that they're evenly distributed along this vertical plane here. Now, there's another way to do that. Let's say I want my top one here and I want my bottom one here, and uh, that's placed haphazardly in the, the center there. I can drag them around to align them, or we actually have an alignment tool in PowerPoint that will align these and distribute them evenly across this plane. In fact, let's kind of put them off center so we can demonstrate how this works. So to use this tool, first thing I need to do is select all of them. And the way I'll do that is click on the first, then hold down the shift key and click on the other two. And you can see they're all selected. I'll do that one more time. Click on the first, hold shift, click on the second and the third, and they're all selected. And I know that because we have these little nodes on the corners to resize them. Now, all I need to do is make sure I'm on the shape format tab of our ribbon and I have an alignment tool. So I can click on this and first thing we're going to do is align these on the center line. So we're gonna do align center and now they're all aligned center. And then I can go back to the alignment and then I have a distribute option. So we wanna distribute these vertically I click on that, and now these are all evenly distributed along this plane, which is great. So you can drag them around or you can evenly distribute them. And one thing I wanna point out is, while these are evenly distributed from top to bottom here, we can see we're a little off center on this um, box. You can see this edge is a little higher than the other. That's because the top and the bottom weren't equidistant from the top edge and the bottom edge of the slide. So honestly, with this kind of thing, it's usually easier to align the middle one 
and then kind of place the top one where you'd like and the bottom one where you'd like, and then we'll get those guides to show that they're evenly distributed. That's usually the best way to do this, but I did want to show you if you were making a cluster of um, shapes for some reason and you wanted to make sure they were evenly distributed across your page, you have the ability to do that with this um, shape format option in our ribbon and in the alignment, there's that distribute tool. So both of them work just fine depending on your application. So very good. Now let's connect these together with some lines because we want to make a flow chart. Now there are a couple of different lines that we can create. We're going to start with the regular old line with an arrow so it shows the flow of information. We can click on that and when I hover over a box I get these four little circles, these little nodes. Well these are connection points so I can click and drag from one connection point to another and now these two boxes are connected and I can literally pick this up and move it around and they stay connected no matter where I move this around which is really nice. Now, if I, whoops, if I, uh, let me just bring that back and align it. If I now grab that same line again and I connect this top node to this top box, you'll notice we get an angled line and I'm not too crazy about that. I'd rather have a line that has a right angle in it so it, so it shows a little junction there. So I'm gonna delete this. I can click on the arrow and then just hit the delete key and I'm going to use the uh, elbow arrow and that allows me to grab this point and then slide up to this point and it automatically creates that nice right angle joint. I'm going to do the same thing again. Grab the elbow arrow, come over here, click and drag downwards and connect these together and there we go. I've got myself a nice looking flow chart. Now let's make a couple of other uh, nodes. Actually I can go in here and change this to um, one. Two, I'm just putting numbers in just for the sake of making this easy. Now, the next nodes I wanna put in, I'm gonna make a different shape. I'm gonna use the rounded corner rectangle only just because I'd like to show you how that works. So I can click on that. I'm gonna go ahead and make a rounded uh, corner rectangle and let's make this a different color. So I'm gonna make this yellow. That way we have a little differentiation. Now uh, I'm gonna go ahead and align this with the top edge of that. And now I know that I'm pretty evenly spaced from that, which is great. And I can go ahead and copy and paste this and we'll do the same thing. We'll align it to the bottom, make sure it's centered. All my little alignment arrows pop up to show me I'm nicely spaced with everything and we are good to go. Um, obviously the distance here and the distance here is a little different. So I may, if I was gonna get nitpicky, I would probably grab these three boxes and move them over so we are all evenly spaced out. See, I've got those arrows on the bottom that show I'm evenly spaced out. So that's much neater, which is great. And the great thing is because I used the um, uh, the lines from those little nodes in the boxes, everything stays connected, which is wonderful. So let's do that again. We'll grab this and we will bring this over here, connect that all together. Once again, we'll grab this and connect them all together. So there we go. I've got a very nice, clean looking flowchart built. And actually what I'd like to do is I'm gonna pull these way off to this side and then I'm going to grab these and move them over and then we'll look for our alignment guides. And now we're all evenly spaced across the page. So very good, very simple flowchart, um, very easy to use. The key is you wanna use that shape format tab on our ribbon, which gives us color, uh, we can do outlines. There's a whole bunch of other things that we're not gonna get into today. There's some effects. Uh, but the main thing I wanted to focus on was the alignment tools. Now, let's say I wanna put some boxes of color behind these to indicate something, maybe just to divide them up visually. Well, we can do that with a rectangle, but we have one issue is when I draw a new rectangle over this, it's on top of these nodes in our flow chart, which is a problem. But PowerPoint works kind of like Photoshop, there are layers. So what I can do is even though I drew this on top, I can send it behind the other graphics. So just so we have some differentiation in color, I'm gonna make this green. And then up here on my shape format tab of my ribbon, I can go to the button that says send backward. And if I click on the little triangle, a little uh, menu pops up and I can send this right to the back. And there we go, I've got a nice, box behind this piece of data. We can do the same exact thing, except we'll do a rounded rectangle over here. So we can go ahead and draw this like that. In fact, we can actually shrink it down a little bit. It doesn't need to be so big. One thing that's also nice is when you're changing the size, it makes the shape transparent, which is cool. So we'll align that together. Once again, we can go to send backward and send to back. 
And now my one problem is my lines have disappeared because the lines are the same color as the shape. So we can click on the shape, go to our shape format tab of the ribbon, and we can make this, oh, that's, that doesn't look so good. Let's make it uh, gray, that's, that's fine. Okay, there we go. And now we've got these little boxes of color around our shapes. So um, these uh, arrangement tools are very, very useful for laying out graphics on your page. And I wanna quickly point out that this, this idea of send to backwards and alignment and all that kind of stuff works with images as well. So if we were laying out some images on the page, we could use the same tools to move and arrange those images in different places on the page, which is really cool. The last thing we'll check out is, um, let's quickly just look at the um, the outlines for this. So uh, we can go to shape outlines. It gives us a whole bunch of colors um, and we can, let's just make a, I don't know, a yellow outline so it stands out. So I've got this yellow outline that actually doesn't really show up very well. So let's go back to our shape format tab and let's make it uh, black so it stands out. So I've got a black outline to make that pop a little bit more. Um, let's go back to our shape format. Um, I can also give it like sketchy lines. This is obviously a little cutesy and I probably wouldn't use it for any kind of professional presentation, but it might be nice if you were putting together a PowerPoint presentation to use with kids. That might be kind of fun. Um, and uh, we also can use dashed lines as a couple of other different styles. So I just wanted to show you some of the other options there were to manipulate some of these graphics inside of PowerPoint. So as you can see, working with shapes and lines and other design elements in PowerPoint is actually quite easy when you know where the tools are. Of course, they're small and hidden and out of the way, but when you know what to look for on your ribbon, the tools are quite easy to use and it can be quite simple to make very clean looking flowcharts in a PowerPoint presentation. Well, I hope this was hopeful. Thanks so much for tuning in. As always, hit that subscribe button. We release new tech tips every weekday at noon, as well as two live stream projects every weekday at 10 and two. And check out the DAE.com for a full list of online classes, workshops, and private lessons. And if you have an idea for a tech tip you'd like to see me create, leave it in the comments and I'll do my best. Thanks so much and have a great day.